Breeze, Dan, tweeted that speculation from the media, and this is a quote, from my future this fall, I'm currently undecided. I may work for NBC. I may play football again. I may focus on business and philanthropy. I may train for the pickleball tour, senior golf tour, coach my kids, or all of the above. I doubt it could be all of the above. I'll let you know. I doubt it as well. Play hot news or not news, Dan. I'm just going to ask you, the, the part where he goes, I may play football again of this whole thing. Is that hot news or not news? I think it's not news. I mean, it would be news if he played, but I don't think it's realistic. I mean, this is a guy, he's 43, didn't play last year. Last time we saw him play, wasn't particularly good. Uh, and he just had surgery on his left shoulder like a month ago or sometime within the last month. I, I, I think it's... I think it's far-fetched. I think the pickleball thing is more realistic, honestly, for Drew Brees at this point in his career. And, you know, this is something that obviously made waves last night, but even just a, a, a quick text or call here and there, it, it, I didn't find anybody who thought him playing football again this fall uh, was a legitimate possibility. Yeah, I'm with you, Dan. I don't think it's a legitimate possibility, especially if you're talking about the New Orleans Saints. I mean, many people that I knew inside that organization, and not including my nephew, felt that the year that he got hurt, which was two, 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 two to three years ago, that Jameis Winston was actually the better quarterback even in that time, but they didn't mm. want to disrespect Drew Brees, so they gave way to Drew and allowed him to try and will them to a championship. So I don't see where he fits in for anyone else, although I would say this. After having a year off, sometimes injuries heal and you feel a whole lot better. I just don't see where, for instance, the New Orleans Saints would look at Drew Brees and say, hey, come in and let's see what you got, because now you would disrupt the, the team, the chemistry, and everything. And, and if you're Brees, you want to go play for somebody else at 43 and see if you can do it? You want to go play for, like, the Carolina Panthers and have to play against the Saints twice a year? I mean, like – if he had never won the Super Bowl and he felt like he could go back and win a Super Bowl somewhere, I could see it. But what is the point, if you're Drew Brees, uh, of playing football again at this point? I, I think this is a guy that was tweeting to have some fun, and, and, and I, I, I doubt that we should be taking it uh, all that seriously. And, Key, to your point, like, would the Saints even want him at this point? Or are they all set with the team they have going forward? Yeah, Dan, I, I'm totally fine with Drew Brees, you know, giving a tweet considering he just probably saw Tom Brady's new contract for $376 million yeah. over 10 years. Like, let me get some leverage in this whole situation. But I, I, that does bring me to Jameis right. Winston. How committed to Jame, to the are the Saints committed to Jameis Winston? I mean, I think the way the contract is set up, it's 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 year at a time, right? So, I mean, they'll see. But he's coming off of an injury. They liked what he did for them early last year. They felt there was promise there. They felt like, you know, the year he spent as a backup to Breeze and working with Sean Payton and in that system, you know, that, that, that he fixed some things in terms of ability to take care of the ball that cost him, obviously, when he was in Tampa. Uh, so they have high hopes for him, assuming he comes back from the injury in time to start week one, which they, they think is, is possible and likely at this point. Uh, they have high hopes for him. They feel like they've put a good group around him. They feel like with Michael Thomas coming back, uh, that that's a big benefit to whoever would be playing quarterback for them this year. Uh, and right now they're, they're willing to, to see what Jameis can do at this point in his career. Still a young player, uh, incredibly talented, and they were winning games with him at quarterback last year. So, so they're excited. You know what, Dan? I'm extremely excited as well. You use the word excited. I'm excited for my nephew because not only is it the nepotism, I want to see him win a lot of games and hopefully get to a Super Bowl. Now that they added Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, what are you hearing around the league about this receiving core that they put together? Yeah, obviously this was a major weakness for them last year with, with your nephew not playing and then with really very little else in that group that they could rely on and then obviously they lost uh, Jameis and had trouble at quarterback so the major major upgrade uh, if he's coming back a, a guy that not long ago set the uh, NFL single season record for receptions uh, along with Jarvis Landry who's been a reliable performer still not yet 30 years old he only only caught 52 balls last year but he had some injuries and they I think people think there's a bounce back there especially if you know around the league like one of the reasons it took Jarvis so long to sign is because 
a lot of teams perceive him as sort of just a slot receiver, and he wanted to be perceived as more than that. So interested to see how the Saints use him. And then, of course, Olave uh, and everything he brings, assuming he gets up to speed in terms of the NFL game uh, quickly, it, it could be a pretty dangerous group and, and uh, obviously would make Jameis Winston, I think, even better than he was in those first six, seven games last year. How much pressure, how much pressure does this put on Jameis now that this receiving core is intact? Yeah, I mean that that's this is a he's at a point in his career key where, you know, he's got to show it. Like this was he he did 5 years in Tampa Bay, a lot of great things and a lot of things that, you know, that that weren't so great in terms of again turnovers and that's why he's no longer there and why they went out and got Tom Brady and, and we know that story. But now if he's back fully healthy, is the time for Jameis Winston to show that he can be a great NFL quarterback. He was the number 1 pick in the draft. He, he's he's got the talent to do it. Uh, if he doesn't do it here with this group, then I think, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to find, you know, and it's not going to be difficult for him to find another chance, but it'll be more difficult than it was this time around. And remember, he had to take a backup job when he left Tampa. So it's a critical point in Jameis Winston's career uh, for him to show that he can be the player that he believes he can be and that um, much of the league has long believed he would be. Dan, I'm going to ask you to pronosticate a little bit here on this one. Do you, he signed a two-year deal this offseason. Could you see where the Saints could be moving on from Jameis Winston before his two years is up? Sure. And again, without having the contract right in front of me, I, I think it's, it's likely that it could happen next offseason if this year were to go badly. We know they looked around at other options. We know they were in the Deshaun Watson uh, sweepstakes when, when he was deciding between them and Atlanta and, and ultimately decided on Cleveland. Uh, so, yes, we, we know that the Saints are that they that they were thinking a little bigger, right, than Jameis Winston at one point this offseason. And if he disappoints, then then I think it's fair to assume that they, they would again. I don't know exactly who's going to be available this time next year, but I think the draft uh, is perceived as better for quarterbacks next year. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.